silent Surely it was true But since when has impossible Ever stopped you Friday's disappointment It's Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible Ever stopped you This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling fire stirring something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon I'm a castaway, trying to make it back home Hope is far and I'm losing faith Thirsting deep in my soul I fell for the lies that they sold me A mirage that lifts my spirits broken Now I need you to show me I'm not on my own I'm tired of wandering alone I hear your voice call me home Resurrection day in new life. Yeah, yeah, clap your hands. It's resurrection day in new life. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, I know the parking lot was tough on your way in. You got here anytime early, but 
But uh, we had a pretty packed house at the 9 o'clock service. And thank you for coming to the 11 o'clock and bringing your friends and your family. I've met so many of you new people and, uh, and some people uh, just making this, uh, making this trip over to church on a, on a wonderful Sunday morning. I'm Jason Linkis. If you don't know me, my, my lovely wife, Mindy Linkis, just sat down right there. And you'll be hearing from her today. And my, my father, you'll be hearing a bit from him as well. I'll be bringing the message today at the end as well. So we have some great music coming up for you. I want to say thank you to the, our sound team and our music team for making this thing happen. Clap your hands for them right now. So, Welcome to New Life. Uh, we, we, this is how we say it. This is how I say it anyways. We are an interdenominational, multicultural fellowship of believers, believing we're so much stronger together than we could ever be apart. The Lord brought you here for a reason and a purpose, and know it, you know it. And uh, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you have you at church today. We're going to celebrate a risen Savior. We're going to sing. We're going to preach. We're going to get it done. All in the name of Jesus, all right? So uh, I want, here, here, here's the deal. So uh, normally when we have a service, like weekly, everybody kind of stands up and, and we praise together. And I want you to say that we're not requiring that today, but we are saying you're totally welcome. And I hope you will. Stand when you feel like standing. Clap when you feel like clapping. Sing. And the words will be up there. You can sing along with one of the songs you know or you get to know. So we, we just want you to be involved. This is your service. Make it count. This is the resurrection service. Make it a big one. Expecting great miracles upon your life today. Uh, that your head will be lifted up and you'll see the good things God has for you. That our, our lives will line up completely with the will of God. And we're not afraid of the will of God in new life. We know that's the best thing for us. That's the that's will of grace and love and opportunity and favor. He loves you like that. And we're going to preach about it and sing about it today. So get started uh, with a great song with, with uh, one, of our, one of our directors of our music, one of our music uh, worship leaders. And we're going to be, be going through this thing. And I want you to be happy, celebrate, and clap your hands and shout to God because he's worth our praise. Come on, somebody say amen. So Justin, you bring it, man. I love it. Oh, me. 
In darkness rejoice as though heaven had lost.
just feel God's presence in this room, there is nothing that can take away the miracle that's gonna happen here today, that has already happened here today. And as I was praying and preparing for this Easter Sunday, there was a voice in my head that kept saying, who are you? And I kept saying like, yeah, who, who am I? Who am I to come up here? Who am I to do what I do? But an even more powerful, still small voice said, you are mine. He said, you are mine. You, every single person that's listening to this right now, you belong to God. And he has a miracle for you farther, beyond your wildest dreams, beyond everything that you could ever ask for. As we sing this song today and just worship, I just encourage everyone to reach out, stand up, reach out your hands and sing. Yeah. Sing this song and accept this miracle in your life today.
Come up here to me. I'm on the mountain. Come on up. I got something to help you out. He gave him these two tablets. You know what these two stab tablets are? Ten Commandments. Yeah. Written on the stone. He said it was written for your instruction. They ended up not really working. Nobody could keep up. Yes. Don't you ever just feel like sometimes you just can't keep up? Moses ended up shattering the Ten Commandments. And Jesus says, come on, come on, let's make two more in the same fashion as the first ones that you broke. So he made it and he wrote the very same words, still trying to help people out. But Jeremiah saw the future. Jeremiah 31, 33 says of, speaks of our time. And, he, and in Jeremiah 31, 33, it says that he saw the covenant after those days. Yeah. I will put my law within them. Yeah. I will write it on their hearts. Who needs some help from the Lord on the inside. I can't, I can't keep up with a list of rules, regulations. I can barely keep up with the speed limit. I'm talking about God help me out inside. I've broken, I've shattered everything you've sent my way to help me. I've just shattered it. Well, guess what? This tomb cut out expertly by this rich man who says he cut it out himself the resurrected body wasn't going to be contained in this fancy tomb it can't hold the living stone it didn't hold Jesus when he resurrected that was just an empty tomb that was just an empty tomb the living a tomb a graveyard isn't meant for the living to be in there we come and we bring flowers but the graves are meant for the living not for the living stone I love thinking of the Lord as a living stone because there's so much to him you know, on a precious, it says that he's a precious stone to those who believe. Yes. He's a living stone, whether you believe him or not. Yes. But he's a precious stone if you believe. Yes. There's so many facets. You know, a stone, a precious gemstone, has so many flat surfaces, and it brings out such beautiful patterns and yes. stones. And, and it bring all of these different facets. They bring out the brilliance. They bring on the light. They also bring out the fire. This dispersion. And somehow the precious stone is there. And when you hold it just right. When you hold it just right. Oh, it lights you up. It lights you up. You can see. I believe in you. When you believe, he becomes a, a precious stone. If you're like, you know, I've heard about him and I've heard about him my whole life. I've heard about him. You know, I don't see the light. It's confusing. It's just, it just looks like a stone. I don't understand. Keep on looking. Keep on looking. Look from over here. Look from over here, because one of the angles is going to get to you, because the light's going to come through to you. Yeah. Just keep looking, keep looking. There's so much to see. There's so many facets. 
visits to his perfection. It will expand your mind and illuminate the strength of your life. I read a, a quote from someone that says, if you leave out Christ, you're leaving the sun out of the day, the moon out of the night. You leave out the waters from the sea, the floods from the river. You leave joy out of heaven. Don't live a life where you leave Jesus out of it. He's the light of the world. He's a precious stone. He's a risen living stone and he's worthy to be joined. He asks you, come to me, join on up. He's inviting you, let's join on up. When she was singing, I believe, I really can say that, I believe. I believe you, not because there's anything good in me, but I believe you, Jesus, because I've seen you lift my life up out of the pit. I've seen when I shatter it all, that you can put it back together, that you love me with an everlasting love. And I believe you. I trust you. Let's just have this Easter, not just mark the new season of spring, but let it mark a new season of belief. We need to join together as the church. In Ephesians, it says that his, that his intent is that now through the church, that's you, the manifold wisdom, I'm talking every facet of God's perfection would be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God's gonna take care of you if he's gotta go to another stratosphere to take care of it. And it says this was all according to his internal purpose that he accomplished. And who? In our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, I believe in you. Amen. Clap your hands for Pastor Mindy today. That's good stuff. Hey, hey, listen. Don't leave your miracle in the house. Take it with you. There's a miracle for you. There's a breakthrough for you. There's a new beginning. You know, the world has a new beginning, and I, I jump in on that new beginning at the beginning of the year. We call it New Year's and resolutions. But for the believer, this day right here is really the day of the new beginning. This is a new beginning. Jesus said, I have done a new thing. Let this new thing begin in you. Let a new thing, new life, new power, new healing, a new miracle begin in you today. Today is the day of miracles for you, the believer. Somebody shout amen today. Come on, shout amen today. Today is your day. It's the day of your miracle and the day of your new beginning. And thank you for being a part. Clap your hands for this team up here. Man, what a great team going on. We got it going on. You're going to love this. You already do. You already do. Beautiful music, beautiful band and orchestra, and beautiful people just bringing it. We thank God for it. You know what? I didn't mention this in the first service, but there's one people that we so many times don't mention when we're thanking people. And we don't thank enough the tech people, Amen. the people in the tech department, right? And the only every time you ever notice them is when they mess up. And they just don't mess up. So clap your hands for them anyway, right back there. We thank God for you. You're so beautiful. Thank God for all of you, for the work you've put in. I know that the work has been put in because I've heard Sandra singing this for three months. I'll tell you, she sings all of this. I know this music, but I've never seen it so good as it is up here. We love it, and we welcome you today. We're blessed by you. We want to do something maybe we don't do usually on Easter. We're going to welcome our first-time guests today. Someone ask that our lights come up. Look, I didn't even have to ask. There, see, clap your hands for the tech team. There you go, right? I just mentioned it. They come up. Our ushers are coming, and we're going to uh, ask you if you're a first-time guest, uh, if you would allow us to know who you are and where you are. We'd like to give you a guest card. I love you, Skip. You're a champion, man. We bless you. I love you guys. And bless you all if you're a first-time guest right there. All right. There you go. Clap your hands for her. Welcome, hon. What's your name? 
Yes, your, your first time? And what's your name? And your first time guests? Well, where have you been so long? <laughs> welcome back. We clap, we clap our hands for you and welcome you to new life. This is your house now. God bless you. I think we have some other. Raise your hand real high if you're first time guests. We don't know where you are. All over the building. Come on, church. Clap your hands for our first time people right here. Jim. Hey, Jim. You missed us over here. Clap, clap your hands really high. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for the first time guests, uh, well, I don't think we mentioned it in the first no. service, but uh, we have a gift bag for you. It's in the cafe area. So when you go out, don't forget to go get your bag, okay? It's got a bunch of fun stuff in there for you. T-shirts and such. Yeah. T-shirt in it? I just, I never, I never get a T-shirt. I never get one. I, you got to be a new member or a first time guest. I've been here 38 years. I don't get a T-shirt, all right? I guess I'll have to buy one, right? I guess I will. So I will. They're beautiful. They're neat. Uh, we want you to have it. So go by and pick up your T-shirt. And maybe in that somebody didn't go get one in the first service, maybe I'll, I'll get theirs. Anyway, hallelujah. Anyway, we love you. And please fill out that guest card. We're glad you're here. We love this house, a house of love. There's love in this house. We love you. How many of you know that faith works by love? And we love you. So thank you for being here today. If you're here forever or if you're here for the first time, you're part of this great house today. And we want you to come back. You know, this is the day of new beginnings. And people are coming back to church. You know, COVID took a real hit on the church. On a lot of things, but certainly the church. And welcome back. We're inviting people back into church that haven't been here for a while. Thank you for trusting and believing and staying faithful even when you were in the house. Thank you for being here today. And welcome back. Clap your hands and welcome back some people that are coming back after COVID. We love you. Minister AC, I love you up front, man. I love your family. We love all of you, and welcome to the house. Please fill out that guest card, place in the offering plate. Let me say that we have church here all week long. I do a Wednesday night. Let me say this to you, that Jesus was busy on Sunday afternoon after his resurrection. He arose, and Mary clung to him. And he said, don't cling to me, for I must go to my father. And that night, he came back to his disciples. So I'm going to tell you Wednesday night what he was doing when he went away. While he was away, I want to tell you what he was doing on Sunday afternoon. It's a good thing. Thursday nights, a great Bible study with Michael and Sally. We have a t Sunday night celebration of a Tuesday night. It's just a great place to be. And we want you to be here with us. Come to church and be blessed. But certainly come on Sunday. And welcome back to the house of God. We're blessed you're here. Our ushers are coming back. And we're going to invest today. And I thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. You know, we don't own a Burger King. We don't have a 995 hotel that we are, are putting people in. But we have you. For 38 years, we have survived and we have thrived because of a people that love the Lord and have placed their gifting into that blue bag right there. That's how we make it. Every... every Year, year after year, for 38 years, we're still here feeding the hungry, reaching the world, and preaching the gospel, and celebrating Christ. Isn't it cool? It's because of people that are so faithful. You know, our pastor has a massive vision that our pastors do, and he shared, Pastor Jason shared with us the vision of the future. It's out there in the mall. It's, uh, it's um, rolling uh, in the mall on the screen, and it's a major, major vision of building our school right back here. We have all this property all the way to the billboards. It's New Life property. Pastor Jason found it years ago, 19 acres, and we built this building on it. He's going to build a school and a gymnasium on it. Amen. Then he's going to build a senior living facility on it. Amen. And you know what? We believe. We believe we're going to do it for cash. Amen. We believe we're going to do it for cash. And we're going to educate children. We're going to teach them music. We're going to teach them technology. We're going to have it equipped so beautifully. We're going to raise up our community for, of worshipers. and worship. You know that these people on this platform here, these people are from our church. We didn't bring these people in. You know, these singers, they're ours. They came right out of our children's ministry, our youth ministry. Clap your hands for them. They come up and they, and they worship and they become adults. And we love it. And we love it, man. And they're, they're, they're talented and they're anointed. And we want to raise up an army of worshipers out of this building back here and out of this building here. We want to do that. 
So I believe that people are going to give to it. I'm, and I'm just saying, I'm, I'm going to be a front man, Pastor. I'm just saying it. I just believe people are going to build it for cash. Amen. Amen. Well, when are you going to build it, Pastor, pa uh, Dr. Linkus? When you give to cash. <laughs> right. I believe, I believe a lot of things. You know I'm a believer. I believe for 38 years and the Lord has never let us down. He's ne I believe there will be million dollar gifts. You, you, and don't laugh. Because when the Lord told Abraham about Isaac, Sarah laughed. The Lord didn't like it. So don't laugh at a miracle. So just come next Sunday and I'll tell you about the million dollars. You got to be here. I'm not going to call you. I'm just going to tell you. God's going to raise up people. Amen. And, and we're going to do the work. And we're going to make it happen. Somebody's staring at me now. Got real quiet in here. Hallelujah. But God bless you for your giving. Say, well, I don't have but $10, Larry. Put in the offering. I don't have anything, Larry. Welcome. We're glad you're here. You're welcome. If you're broke or if you're not, we're not about your money. We're about the kingdom of God. And we love you. And we pray over our giving today. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you for a people that care so very much. And that invest so very much. Jesus. Yes. I just thank you. For what you just told me. I just thank you. Thank you that I wasn't just talking. Lord that I was being obedient to you. And that your miracle is going to happen. Financially. For this school. This gymnasium back here. For this sports center. Thank you. Jesus. Oh. Whew. Thank you. Somebody better thank him. Somebody better thank him today. God bless you as you give. And come on, team. Clap your hands for this team, man. They're massive. Carry on. Our pastor's coming. Our music's singing. Let's do some good. I searched the world. But it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade. Are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied.
keeps you cutting. You turn grace into courage and gold into our knees. You turn gold into our knees. Making waves through the sea. You turn seas into highways. Yeah. You're the only one. Yes, you are. I hear the elders say, at the feet of the king, there's a constant offering around the throne of the Lord. They never cease to sing. At the feet of the king, there's a common thing. So they cry, holy, holy Lord. So we cry, holy, holy God. Hey. Ooh. At the feet of the king.
are the only wise God. The one who sits up on the throne. You shall not be removed. You are the only wise God. Your kingdom shall never end. You're high and lifted up. So we cried, holy, holy God. Help me, choir. So they cried, holy, holy Lord. So we cried, holy, holy Holy, 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 yes, you are God, you are holy. 
Come on now, come on. Hey, hey Darian, Darian wrote that rap, by the way. I like that. Clap your hands with that. It was wonderful. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to church. Man, I tell you what, today has been an awesome day so far. It's just about to get better. Get some more word in you. Get some more life in you. How many of you know the word of God calls itself the seed of God? Comes get in your heart and your mind and grow up in you. Change things of your life and in your life and around you, people's lives around you. Man, who need, who desperately need some hope. How many of you know there is hope in Jesus Christ? The word calls him an anchor for your soul. That's a hope, it's an anchor for your soul. You, you anchor yourself to him, man. You're going to be all right. And today we'll be talking about some things that, that, uh, that, that'll help get us there. Some, some things that we look at, that we, we look about in this death, burial, resurrection of our Savior and His, and his ascension as well as He, he ascended. Uh, and that right now he's, he's sitting. You know, we tell you what, uh, we're going to talk about these things today. But he's sit. first of all, He sat you. When you believe the Word said He sat you with Him in heavenly places. So even though you're sitting here, you're also sitting there. You're also sitting in a spiritual realm in heavenly place. That's what happens when you believe. The Lord just sets you there. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. He makes that real clear. He wants all the glory. And you know, it's okay when you mess up. He just gets you back up. He wants you to not mess. Hey, look, I want you to mess up less. But let me just tell you, I want to mess up less. But here's the thing. Even when we do mess up, he doesn't throw us away. Aren't you glad about a God like that? He went ahead and took care of things. And we just have to, as Paul says in, the, in his writings, he says, I just have to learn to live up to what I've already attained in Jesus Christ. He's already done it for me. I just got to live like it. You know what I'm saying? And my life gets better as I do. The grace just takes over and the, the love takes over. And we learn to love this God even more. He loves you. Let me just tell you what, the Lord loves you. And you're loved in this house. This is a place of love. And a place of grace. If you're looking for some love and some grace, come on to New Life Space Coast. Hello to our friends watching all across the world over there. Great to have you guys. New Life Nepal checking in right here. Uh, Bogota checking in right here. Our churches and, and ministries that we uh, support all around the world. Uh, God bless you and thank you for being here with us. And uh, your friends, as you tell them, at, fi at, at, our, our new, at our new website, our website, New Life Space Coast. Dot com. You can find out and watch us and watch our old, you know, older messages and archive messages and watch us live. But I, I like you in the house, all right? We filled up that first service and this guy's getting there. Come on, somebody. This guy's getting there and with our 11 o'clock service, we're so blessed to have you here and to see what God is doing in our hearts and in our lives. The Lord, let me just tell you what, he laid down his life that you might have life and to have it to the full. And he wants you to have an abundant life. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove that to you by the word today. Is somebody ready for the word? Amen. Matthew chapter 27, we're gonna start there. Verse 50, we're gonna start with Christ on the cross and in, that, in, that, in his, his death and what he did as he gave up his life that we might have life. And by the way, you know, there's always discussions and you read them, you could read them as, as you're on Facebook and people are always discussing, you know, uh, or if you read uh, scholarly books and things like that, it's like, you know, who, who, who was it that actually killed Jesus? Actually, who killed Jesus? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's not even an argument or, or uh, something you have to realize. I mean, you don't have to know the answer. Let me tell you the answer to that. Jesus gave himself up. He gave himself up. He came to give his life that we might have life. He came to give his life. That was, he, was, he was focused on the cross, uh, his whole ministry. But then he, and he talked about it. He laid it out there that this is what was going to happen. Nobody really got it. They didn't understand it. But that was what he came to do, to give himself up that we might have life. I want a big old thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, that's a deal. I mean, he, he did that for you. And so he, 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 wants us, he wants us to give him praise for that. He wants us to know that he did that for us. And, and so he, he, what he said, the, the word says is he laid his life down and then he picked it back up again. That's who, that, Jesus did it for you. He sacrificed himself. I mean, it took men up there to put the nails in his hand and people to put the nails in his hand, put the cross up, you know, all the things that happened to fulfill the prophecy that had been said. By the way, every prophecy that has ever been spoken about Christ up to this point, this day and time, has been fulfilled. Every T crossed, every 
I dotted about the prophecies of God. It's happened exactly what it was said to happen from hundreds of years before the cross, thousands of years before the cross, starting in Genesis chapter four, uh, chapter three, verse fourteen, when it says that that that, that the, the seed of God, Jesus, would would put his foot, he crush crush the head of the devil. Aren't you glad he crushed the head of the devil? And it took it took a while for you know thousands of years of history that we, we can read and look at, but it took that cross to make it happen. That that cross, everything changed. What he did on that cross changed everything. So we have to, re in this season, we just, we're, we're in a thank you Jesus moment. I want to be in that moment our whole life. But I, that's what we are. Thank you Jesus for doing what you did. And you know, it says, it says that, uh, you, that the Lord will crush his, the enemy's head, but, but uh, it will bruise the, the, uh, the, the heel of the Lord. Now, let me just tell you about that. I think that was a pretty good kick he gave him. How about you? You're kick enough to get bruised. I mean, I'm talking about he, he took care of things. He, has, he doesn't have the power that he tries to convince you he has. The enemy does not have the power he tries to con convince you that he has. he has. He has deception. He has lies. But he doesn't have the power to take life away from you. Come on, somebody. I tell you what, we make good decisions in the word of God and the Lord will keep you safe. Somebody with you? Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you right here. So it says this. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the, the bodies of many holy people who had died before were raised to life. They came out of the tombs. And after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. They went to Jerusalem and just started telling people, hey, hey, I'm here. <laughs> what are you going to say? I'm here. You thought I was there, but I'm here. How many of you know it was a powerful moment when he died on that cross? That blood that was shed, it was powerful. Things happened in the natural and supernatural realms. I mean, the rocks split, earthquakes happened. The, to the, the veil, see that veil, that veil is a big, don't skip over the veil part of that. When the veil was torn in two, that was a religious, that was a religious sign that people have been following for, for like, like thousands of years as after, since they had set up the religious system of the old, the old religious system. How many of you know Jesus came to make a new system, amen? A relational system. But in the old days, that, that, that big curtain taller than this building was, was, was in. It was there. It kept people out. And the holy place was on the inside. And only one holy guy who they thought was holy would go in there a year and do sacrifices and things like that. But they had to tie a, tie a rope to his, his ankle and a, a bell in his hand. If the bell stopped ringing, they had to start pulling. Because, I mean, it was scary. I mean, you know, the idea was that, he, you know, was that, was that reverent. But God wanted it differently. God wanted relationship with people. Amen. And so what happened was, when, that, when, that, uh, when, that, when this happened, when he was dying, the, the, the temple curtain rent in two. It, it ripped. It rent. It was, it was no longer basically saying, look, I'm done with the old. I'm ready for the new. Come on in. And I'm coming out. And he did that, and he did that by the cross. And I say, thank you, Jesus, for that. I got a lot of thank you, Jesus moments today, so I might be thanking him a lot. It said it, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Religion, the old religion, the old ways are going to put, put away. And I'm doing a new way. See, I've come to make all things new, Jesus said. He makes them new in your life. He makes them new every, each and every day in your world. Aren't you glad for a God like that? Go to Luke chapter 23, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how God is, is ready to, to move you into a new place. And this is a, this is a very interesting scripture in, in Luke. Did I say Luke? Luke 23. It should be on your screen as well. I'm going to turn there too because I like reading it out of here. Uh, Luke chapter 23. Somebody with me today? Yeah. You happen to be in church today on this Resurrection Sunday? It's good to be here. Good to be here with you. And, uh, and it's good to celebrate God, God's life today with you. He, he, he's a living God. Somebody say amen. It says one of the criminals who hung there, so Jesus was on the cross, and, and a criminal on one side and a criminal on the other, as you know the story. That's why you see those three crosses all the time. But Jesus was in the middle. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly but getting, and getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Guy starts preaching about Jesus while he's on the cross. 
Started preaching about Jesus, and he finally realizes who this God is and who he's, sit, who he's hanging next to. And he starts preaching about him. He starts saying, look, guy, you better get over on, on his side because this guy's about to do some things that are going to change the world. And, and so he, this, this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, the, the man, the criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth, and that you got it now, and that you understand it now. Talk to the criminal who was, who was standing up for him. And, and I said, I tell you the truth. Today, somebody say today. today. So today, this day now is how it really is. This day right now, you will be with me in what? Paradise. Paradise, paradise. You'll be with me in paradise. Uh, interesting concept on the cross. We're talking about paradise. He was about to make paradise possible, my friends. Paradise was about to be possible for people. It was always his concept. It was always God's concept to, to have people in paradise from the very beginning. You look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. You, you look at the very, very beginning of our world when things were spoken into existence and God created man. It says, now the Lord planted a, a garden in the east in Eden and there he put the man that he had formed, he, he, a garden in the east. That, that garden is, is from, the, from the word paradisimo, which means paradise. God put them in paradise. And paradise was just this, that people were there. They had no shame. They had no guilt. They had everything taken care of. They were walking around, doing their thing, raising up, uh, you know, animals, raising up things. And, uh, you know, all of this and, and taking care of the, the you know, their, their garden, taking care of their paradise. And they were doing good and had a relationship, open relationship with Jesus. I mean, I had an open, open relationship with God. It, the whole thing was open and it was, it was, it was good. Amen. That's how God planned it to be. But then there was that thing that happened, that thing that happened with the serpent. You know what I'm talking about. Don't have time to go into it, but you know, God over a lion, lion. Don't you think God, you, you, God, God's holding something back from you. God doesn't have his best, your best in, in mind. He, he, he's not really for you. This enemy God, come on, somebody, somebody ever tell you some stuff like that about God? Let me tell you what, that, 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 don't let that lie in your life. Don't let that lie in your life because God has only the best in mind for you. He has only the best. He has a paradise that is still possible again now after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of our Savior. Paradise is possible for you. Amen. Paradise isn't perfect. Paradise is, is great. You can find peace there. You can find life there. You can find, you can find some things that when you're living in paradise. How many of you know peace is good in paradise? Amen. And we want peace and we want love and we want grace and we want all of that. But even Jesus said in this world there will be trouble. Even in the midst of living a, a life of paradise, there's going to be some stuff that comes up. Yeah. He could have left that part out. I always like to say that. <laughs> but he didn't because it's true. And we, we know we have issues, we have troubles in our life, and, and you know, the way we deal with that means everything. The, we, we need to stay with a paradise mentality, even when we're going through struggles and troubles, to realize, I'm going to get back to that place, I'm going to get over this thing, this circumstance in my life, this trouble in my life, and I'm going to get over there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in paradise again. God has paradise moments for you. And paradise for you to live in. He wants that kind of life for you. That's what you were created for. That's where you work out the best. Amen. But, it, you know, there's storms. Even in paradise, you're sitting there, you know, drinking your, you know what, whatever you're drinking. And uh, water. He's drinking water. Uh, you know, you're in paradise and he's doing that. And you, your iced tea with lemon and whatever else. Some of you drink. I know you. I know you. And, 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 and all of those. So, so you're sitting there. You're enjoying. You're relaxed. You're doing your thing. And, and then all of a sudden you see the storm are coming. And what do you got to do? You got to run for shelter. You got to go out, get out of that place. The lightning's coming. The things are going. But even in this world, there will be trouble. Come on. But he, the Lord said, take heart. He said, I have overcome the world. And he invites us into that overcoming. And I say again, thank you, Jesus. I told you I'd be thanking him a lot today because it's just too good. This is a moment of just get, pouring our praise on a Savior who did it for us and said, just say thank you, Jesus, and then live a life that lives up to it each and every day. So that paradise is possible. Paul talked about it even when he was, when he was writing. He was saying, look, I got taken up to the third heaven. I've been in paradise. I understand it. He said, paradise, I, I, I get it. I, I've lived there. I've, I've, I've experienced it. Paradise is possible. I'm sure other people experienced paradise even back in the day, in the Bible days, that, that your paradise of peace and love and grace and understanding. When you get those things going on in your life, that is paradise. 
You're living in love. You're living in grace. You're living in forgiveness. You're living in, in a whole life that it says, Lord, thank you for taking care of me, realizing that you're ever, my ever-present help in my time of need. That's what he calls himself. And to that I say, Lord, I always need you. Amen. How many of you say, Lord, I always need you? Yeah. He's, I, Lord, if you're, if you're that, then I'm this. I'm believing you. I'm believing that, that that is real. So we see this paradise as possible. And, you know, I, I want you to realize that a good life and a loving life and a grace-filled life is possible right here, right now. Because Jesus paid the price that you might have life. Have it abundantly. Have it to the full. Get it. Live it. Let's go. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, so you see this, you see this. And so you get the garden of paradise, you, 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 you go, and then and right now I want to go to John chapter 20 as we continue to move through this story of this weekend. And we, sh we, find, we find a grave, we find a garden, and we, we call this the garden of your heart as we have put some flowers out here and things like this. This is our garden. We've created a garden. But it's really the garden of your heart that, that I want to talk about today. And the, the, your heart's such an important thing to God. The, but it's so important. The Lord, the, you know, the Bible says this in, in 423 of Proverbs. It says, above all else, guard your heart. It is the wellspring of life. Above all else. I mean, that's a pretty big statement, isn't it? Because, man, the enemy wants to get in there and lie to you, and arrows on your heart and break your heart. But Lord wants to, he said, I came to bind up the broken heart. And aren't you glad about that? Lord, I wanted you to put us back together. Lord, where things are hurting in us, Lord, put us back together even right now. Do your miracle moment in us right now. May our heart just be full of you, of your love and your grace, your forgiveness. Amen. I feel it. That's why I feel it. Yeah, you need to get close with God and release things that are binding you up and realize your heart is, is, is wanting to be healed and wanting to, to, to expand. That, that, that verse always also is, is read, uh, it, it, out of your heart, not just the wellspring of your life, but the borders of your life are formed by your heart. Don't shut your heart off. Don't let it stay broken. It is forming the borders of your life. Amen. So get with it. Amen. Let's get with it. So we're getting with it. So, so we're seeing this. That this is in John chapter 20. I guess I should go there since I'm the preacher as well. John chapter 20. <laughs> Let me interrupt myself and get there. It says, uh, it's, it says this in verse 13. Um, this is when Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene at, at the empty tomb. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? Uh, well, let's start in verse 10. Let's, I think we're there, right? Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary Magdalene stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look at the tomb and saw angels in white, two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they, 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 they put him. I don't, I, I don't know. He's gone. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? And this is a term right here. It says, thinking he was the gardener. She said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her in that very familiar voice, I'm sure at this moment, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in the Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. She, she, all of a sudden she realizes that this person who she thought, who she thought was the gardener was, was standing there, was actually Jesus standing there. Come on, somebody, this is too good. But she wasn't too far off if you really think about it. If you really think about it, you, you, she wasn't too far, far off because, because how many of you know the Lord is the gardener of your heart? He's the gardener of your heart. Eternity has been set in the hearts of men. In Ecclesiastes it says it. Men and women. Uh, eternity is in the heart of people. Your heart is so important. Take care of your heart. Hold on to your heart. Take your heart back. The enemy tries to get in there. man. Take your heart back. It's time to get this done. Not just for you, but the people around you who need you to have your heart healed. People you can deal with in this world who need their, their hearts healed. Lord's going to use you to do great things. I believe that with all my heart. He will use you. Amen. Amen. He will use you. So we see this. So the gardener, thinking he was the gardener. Man, isn't he? Isn't he? She was pretty much there. And then she saw him. She said, well, there he is. He is the gardener of my heart. Awesome. You know, the place that he took her from 
from, from being, in, in, you know, in prostitute and uh, Mary Magdalene and, and, and all the things and brought her up and put her in the ministry, put her ahead of things, brought her full circle to where she needed to be. Come on. It's good. The Lord is good, isn't he? Man, he's so good. Thank you, Lord. So, so we, we see all this. And, and, then we see, and then we see in John chapter 19, verse 30, and then I'll get quickly to, to uh, 10 quick points. I'm not going to keep you here real long. We had to start a little late because the, the first service was packed and the parking lot was packed and you guys took forever to get in here, okay? <laughs> but I'm glad you made it. Uh, but, but we had, we, so, so we, we see here in this verse, it says, uh, when he had received the drink, this is when he's on the cross, it is finished. He said, it is finished. So I say, it is finished. So back to the cross. He said, it is finished. Now, if it is finished, what is it? It's finished. If Jesus said it's finished, it's finished. He took care of what needed to be taken care of. He did what he needed to do. He brought grace to a world. He reconciled everybody back to God. You know, the, the veil was torn. The rocks were splitting. The people were popping up out of the grave. That's what happens when Jesus gets involved. And your life, your dreams, your hopes start popping up. Things you thought were dead and gone start popping up. The things that you thought you would never accomplish start popping up in your life. All of a sudden they start growing. You start growing in ways you never thought you'd grow. You start believing things you never thought you would believe. But your faith is growing and things are starting to light you up from the inside out. This is where God wants to take us to a place where we realize that he already did it. Now I just get to live in it. What did he do? He brought paradise back to his people. He said it himself, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. He brought paradise back. Paradise lost, Milton, if you read it. Paradise <laughs> regained. How many, how many are glad it came back again? Amen. Paradise lost, paradise regained. So we see this. So, so Paul understood this. Paul understood this. We dealt with him a little bit earlier. But I'm going to go through uh, ten quick points. I'm going to take about seven minutes to do it, I think. I'm a preacher, so it was a little bit of a lie, but you know, on, the only thing you can lie about with your preaching is when you're going to stop. And God told, told me you can lie about that. Seven or eight minutes, maybe. So Ephesians, I, I really want to get this to you, though, because this, this is good. It says this. Uh, so in Ephesians, somebody in Ephesians, I'm not, preacher, preacher working again up here. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I learned this in second grade. God's electric power company. If you ever forget it, you can get that. Uh, stuck with me. It says in verse 3, let's go to verse 3. Praise to be to God and the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in heavenly realms. Ten things that have happened you're going to see right here in these few verses. He's done some things for you. Because it is finished, these things are real to you today. I want you to know them, get them, embrace them, understand them, live like it's true because it's true. You write them down, go back and watch it later, whatever. But get these in your heart. Just go read it for yourself. They're all right in here. Who has blessed us in heavenly realms. The Lord has blessed us because of the cross, because of the resurrection. You are blessed today. I want you to start receiving, like you've never before, the blessings of God. Believing that you are blessed. Believing that your actions today, and, or what you did, or what you did wrong, or you're, are going to keep you from the blessing of God. Listen, I just say, line yourself up with the things of God. The blessings are coming. Seeking first his, his kingdom and his righteousness. He blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. And everything is spiritual, by the way. And so every spiritual blessing has been given to you. Don't doubt it. Embrace it. Live like it. Verse 4. It says, for he chose us. Oh, my. What? He chose us? He chose you? Let me, you are chosen by God. There's nobody in here that hasn't been chosen by God. Everybody he put on this earth, he chose for a reason. Gave a destiny and a purpose. We don't all follow it, but it's there. It's there. It might be laying dormant, but it's there. God wants to open it up and make it real in your life today. Somebody with me? What else did he do? He chose us in him before creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. It says right here, in love he also predestined us. Now, don't get too caught up in that. There's a lot of talk about that predestined thing, and people fight over that all in, in, in forums and listening and reading and all those things. But here, here, here's the thing. Predestined us. Don't be afraid of being predestined. It's not like you're a robot and you got to do everything, you know, you know what I'm saying? you got free will. Come on, somebody. But he predestined us to be adopted. What did he predestine us to do? Right here. I could have said preachers a lot, of, a lot of wrong preaching. Right here. Here it is. Predestined us to be adopted as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ according to his pleasure and will. 
What, what have you been predestined to do? To be a, a family. To be a family, to be a son, to be a daughter of God, to be a family in the family of God. That's what he predestined you. He wanted you to be here today. He wanted you to find a family, your family, yourself, be a part of God's family, be an heir, realize your inheritance. He wanted all this to happen for you because he loves you like that. He wants you to get together with some people in a church like this one or, you know, a church preaching the grace and love of Jesus Christ. And if you're, if you're by the way, if you're not in here today and you're out there, and, and you find a church preaching the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And if they're not, leave. So we see this. So he predestined us. All right, so, so we're sons and daughters. Aren't you glad about that? To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us. He, what has he done? He's, first of all, he blessed us. He chose us. He predestined us, predestined us as sons and daughters. And now he's given us his glorious grace. What has he done? He's given you his glorious grace. I mean, the thing that just, uh, the enemy can't do anything about the grace of God. He has no, no handle on the grace of God. When you start living in the grace of God, that is just grace. It's called unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. God gave it to you. Live like it. Come on. Amen. Let's live like it. He's given it to us. It's just as a gift of God. He wants, to, he wants to be real sure that you didn't get it on your own. He wants you to know that he gave it to you. In him, we keep reading, we have redemption through his blood. We have been redeemed. We have been forgiven because of his blood that he shed on the cross that we celebrate the, the giving of himself to us today. And say, thank you, Jesus. The forgiveness of sins is all in here. So you're, you're, he's given us. He's redeemed us. He's forgiven us. Aren't you glad about this thing right there? God has done. And then we see, as we keep going here, we, we, we keep seeing the things that God has done. Forget it, in accordance to his riches of grace that he lavished on us with wisdom and understanding. He has made known to us. Now he has made known to us. Now he's revealed some things to us. That, that's our next one. He's redeemed. He's revealed some things to us. He's made known to us the mysteries the, the, yeah, of his will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in Christ. The deal is, look, it's no mystery anymore. It was a mystery. We talk about a mystery that has been revealed. That's because it was a mystery before the cross. Even as even Jesus' disciples, it was still a mystery to them all the way up to the cross. Even after the cross, they couldn't, they, it wasn't revealed. They couldn't get it. They couldn't grasp it. But how many of you know we get it today? You live in a pretty amazing place, this grace place you live in, because you get it today. We look, get to look back on it and, say, and find it and study it out and look at it and say, wow, look at what Jesus did for me. Act like you get it today. Right? We gotta act like we get it. Why not act like we get it? Well, we know too many times we don't act like we get it, but we, we need to get it. This grace, the mystery, is no longer a mystery. It's been revealed to the people through what he, Jesus did on the cross, what he purposed on the cross. Aren't you glad? Drop, drop right down to, to verse 13, because I, I, I'm, I'm running out of time here on my eight minutes. All right. And you were also what? Included in Christ. He included us. You were included in Christ when you heard the word of gospel of your salvation. You were included when? When you heard the word. When you heard the word. Come on, somebody. Well, how many of you are hearing the word today? You are included. You're included. Out there, you're included. You're included in Christ. He's included. You don't feel excluded. And don't be lonely. Get over with some people loving you and gracing you and giving you the, the support that you need to get through this life. We're here every day supporting people in this life. Don't be, don't be lonely. Don't go at your own. You got people. Somebody say, I got people. I got people. Yeah, you do. And we got you. Included when you heard the word of the gospel of your salvation. Heard the word. Word changes things. Having believed, you were marked. This is my last one, number 10. Been keeping up. Having believed, what? You were marked. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Having believed, you were marked in him. What is that mark that you have? It's the spirit in you. When you put your faith in him and what he's done on the cross, when you start your belief system in the Lord Jesus Christ, you get sealed. He seals you with the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. You have a guaranteed inheritance. Actually, that's my last one. You have a guaranteed inheritance in God. A guaranteed inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for guaranteeing my inheritance with the very spirit that you have put within us, showing me from the inside out how to live this life and helping me through every situation and circumstance. Hard to get a guarantee nowadays in this world. 
You won't guarantee by God you got that one. I, 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 we, our our uh, sound system at the house, like the sound bar, um, it, uh, it, we, we lost the remote. It just completely disappeared. I don't know how that happens. We have looked everywhere. We have looked everywhere. We can't find that thing. I think I probably put it in my pocket and washed it and it went away. I, don't, I have no idea. What but but it, I, I, can't, I can't get the volume up without walking up and, 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 and you know what I mean? Yeah, well, by the way, it, it, brings, it brings me back to childhood when I was about six or seven. When, when, you remember when you just had channels two, six, and nine? You just had two, six, and Does anybody remember that? The youngins won't remember that. Two, six, and nine. And you had to turn it like this on the dial of your television. But I remember um, that wasn't too hard because you get stuck on your shows on that. But, but I remember uh, when we got cable for the first time. And then also we had this other box sitting on top of the thing. And it had its dial as well. No remotes back in that day with the, with the cable box. And, and so remind, I've been reminded of this recently. But, but it didn't matter that you didn't have a remote because if you had kids in the house, they were the remote. <laughs> and I remember my dad sitting there drinking his tea on the couch. Going, hey, Jason. <laughs> hey, Jason. Why don't you get on up there and uh, turn on ESPN? Come on. Well, you either were you either you were either the remote you're either the remote control or the one telling the remote control to go do it. You know what I'm talking about. You know what it is. But so so that's how I feel with this thing. But but I, I had I had to get you know I would assume I, so so what I did I went on Amazon Mindy and I and we started picking out remote uh, this this thing's they say this thing's gonna work this thing's gonna do it so I we ordered it we ordered the first one and got all excited it came the next day on Amazon Prime I, and I, I get it out and I put the batteries in it ah it doesn't work it doesn't work. It doesn't look like the one that was on the screen. And so we called them and they said, well, it's not guaranteed. How many of you know, I like a guarantee. I like a guarantee. It's not guaranteed to work. Well, okay, I'm gonna send it back to you anyways. You gotta figure out what to do with it there because I don't want it. But Lord guarantees. How many of you know he guarantees us? He guarantees, his guarantee is good. I, I, I've done it four times now. I have four remotes at the house. None of them work. So if you're techie, give me a call later, okay, and help me out. It doesn't work. But God's guarantee always works. God is the guaranteeing God, and you can take him at his word. And that Holy Spirit within you, lighting you up from the inside out, working today. And to that, again, one last time, let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we'll just clap your hands and give him praise. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. You're worthy of all of our praise. You're the risen one. You're the resurrected one, Lord, and you're resurrecting us with you. Every hope and dream and relationship, Lord, every job, every, every part of life, Lord, you are resurrecting our lives to higher things. Bow your heads with me. Lord, thank you for resurrecting us today. Thank you for resurrecting us today. Now, right now, everybody's head is bowed and eyes are closed. And I never want to leave a service without giving people an opportunity to put that faith in Jesus. So you can receive this guarantee for yourself, your spirit in you, God's spirit in you, the Holy Spirit of God. And I tell you what, he wants you. He's after you. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching. That's why you're listening. That's why you're in the building because you, you came here for something. And if you don't know this Christ, then you maybe you never put your faith in him. Maybe you've been running. Maybe you knew him early in life. You've been running and today you're coming back to him. Let me just tell you, come on back to him. And don't take this moment for granted. This moment of grace and love and opportunity for a savior to pull you completely in. Right now is your moment. Join the dozens of the first service whose lives were changed like this uh, today, just this morning. Dozens and dozens of people saying yes to God. Running back to God. If that's you in the building, I'm going to ask you to do this. Everybody's head is bowed, eyes are closed. But I'm going to ask you to do this just so you and I can connect. And I want to pray. I'll be praying for you this week. And, and we want to just, I just want to pray for you. And I'm not going to call you out or point you out. Nothing like that. Just between me, you and God. But if you need this Savior, you need to be running back to this Savior. If it's your time, let me just tell you what. And if you don't know him, it's your time. This is your time. I simply want you to do this. Faith is an act, uh, it's, a, it's a verb, and it's an action word. So I just simply want you to do this right now. Just simply raise up your hand.
Just simply raise up your hand right now, all over the building, raise up your hand. And by doing that, you're saying in your heart, yeah, Pastor Jason, that's me. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you, and you, and you, and you. And the hands all over the building. Put your hand up if that's you. Don't, don't leave this place without him. I see you. The Lord loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Thank you, Lord, for the, the, the revelation of your grace and your love. Get into the hearts of these young ones and these older ones and the families, Lord, coming to you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We run to your throne of grace. I want everybody to say this prayer together, whether you raised your hand or no, you should have raised it or, or if you did raise it. Uh, but I want everybody to say this. Say this. Say, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I put my faith in you. I thank you for the cross and your resurrection. And I thank you today for resurrecting me into your great salvation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. That happened all over all over the building, all over at home, all over the radio, it's happening. The Lord is good. Stand up and celebrate Him today. We're going to sing a little bit. Come on now. He holds me, holds me, holds me, holds me, holds me. Yeah. He's so holy, 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 holy. Yeah. Oh God, you run up to the altar like a chest now. You wait another second. Wake up every morning, it's a blessing. Come on now. 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 Christ, I don't know how I repay you, but I feel the Holy Spirit moving in the room. Watch the kingdom come to see the kingdom soon. Everything he does, he you know he does for you. Put it in his hands and I know that he will see you through. You are holy, holy, holy. I'm running to the altar like a track star. You are holy, holy, holy. Can't wait another second, that is my God. You are holy, holy, holy. I'm running to the altar like a track star. You're a wonderful God and we love you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer partners will be down here if you need prayer for anything in your life. If you raised your hand or know you should have come this way as, as we dismiss today, we're going to sing our way out. Hang out as long as you want to. Thank you for sharing your heart and life with us today and your family. We love you. Jesus loves you. Go out there and do some good. Let's get something done for the kingdom of God, all right? Go do good. Have a great afternoon. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Yeah. You are holy, holy, holy. Yes, you are. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Run into the yard like a tractor.